So we're back in VS Code and we're going to create a new file by double clicking in here or you can go to File, New. And we'll save this as an AHK file. So File, Save As. And we'll call it Data Input. Call it anything you like, but remember .ahk extension. Once you've done that, it will automatically create some, I think that's the extension creating this, giving you this code here, which is all good practice, but we're gonna, I'm gonna delete that and put our own box standard code in. What I'm gonna do is paste in some code and I'll explain this code. This is a best practice. So this code you tend to use on pretty much most of your scripts. So this hash sign stands for a directive and that means it's processed before the script has started to run. So it affects the behavior of the script as a whole. The no end directive will stop empty variables being searched. And it's something that's considered good practice and it'll improve compatibility with future AHK releases. Basically it's a performance thing. It'll just run faster. So this next one, single instance force, prevents you running multiple instances of the script. This next one, warn, will give you better debugging. So if your code goes wrong, it's easier to find out where. So like I said, don't worry about these lines of code. It's just good practice and you could well use them all the time. So you can copy and paste them in most of your scripts. I'll provide them alongside all the code for the course in the download section. So to target our online form, I'm going to use the command win activate and it'll give us all these optional parameters to help us identify our online form, which is in the browser. So how do we identify the browser? If you recall, we used WinSpy to help us identify different programs that are running in um, Windows. So if we go to Windows Explorer and go to the C drive, if you remember, WinSpy comes bundled with the auto hotkey installation and there it is there. So what I'm going to do to make it more convenient, and I'll suggest you do the same, is make a shortcut. So create a shortcut. It's going to say you can't create a shortcut here because I guess this is where the programs are. Do you want the shortcut to be placed on the desktop instead? Click yes. And when we go to the desktop, by the way, Windows M is the shortcut for that. So if we double click Windows Spy, it'll bring up our Windows Spy and this will tell us information about our Chrome window. And uh, most importantly, the identifying features which are here. Now, usually the mouse position is all moving and in this case we're not concerned with that. But if you wanted to suspend the updates so you could copy them, you could press control as it says down here and it suspends them. But in our case, we want the an identifying feature, which is we're going to use the process ahk underscore xe chrome. So if we right click that, copy it, we can paste it in our code. So now if we save the code by control S and run the AHK script, it brings up Chrome. So if you go back to our code, we've used WinActivate because we've assumed that Chrome is open, which works well for this particular task, but you could run uh, Chrome from scratch. But here we're assuming that Chrome is already open, it's just minimized and we're activating it. So now we're going to target the form itself. So what I'm going to do, I know that everyone's got different screen sizes. I want to actually zoom in on this by pressing control plus. So we've got a scroll bar. Let's pretend the uh, form was at the bottom, bottom for some reason and we want to get back to the top. So to get back to the top of the form, and we want to get back to the top of the form to begin to fin fill the form in, we use the send input home. So that will send us to the top of the form, but let's give the browser a little bit of a chance to open up. So we'll give it a sleep of say 500 milliseconds save that. Now if we press, press run, 
goes back to the top of the form. So you may have noticed I'm using the send input command. And uh, previously, when we were testing our Windows, sorry, our auto hotkey installation, we just used the send command. And that does the same thing. Now the reason I'm using the send input is because it's best practice. It runs a little bit faster. So we're going to start using send input now. So the next thing to do is if we go back to the form is well first of all on let's make it normal size or at least uh, let's make it about that size so you can see it better. So is to target this drop down. So how do we do that? So we go to our friend Windows Spy. So we go bring desktop up and double click on Windows Spy. That stays on top. And if we hover over that, we can see the mouse position. And if what you can see here is these different types. So this is mouse position relative to different origins. So the screen is the top left of the screen. Our window is this particular window. So if I make that smaller, you'll notice that the window position right in this corner is near, near I can't get it on exactly zero, but it's nearly zero in the window. And the screen, if I click go, go towards there, it's, it's almost zero there on the screen coordinate. So the one we're gonna be using is the screen one. So let's open that up again. So the coordinates for the mouse position, if we, pre if we hover over the drop down, in fact, I'm gonna make this a standard size. And the reason for that, if we don't have the same size window all the time, this mouse position will change all the time. So I'm gonna keep it at the standard text size and now hover over that position, press control, that'll suspend the coordinates and we can copy the screen coordinates for the mouse position. So back in VS Code, we can use those coordinates, but first we're gonna use cupboard mode, which is a command to let HK know what screen coordinates you're using explicitly. So say mouse, and we're gonna say screen. And then we'll use mouse click to let HK know where you're gonna mouse click. So it's left mouse button, and it's in those coordinates. So let's see if that works. And it does click in there. If you've got two screens, I have occasionally had a problem getting the correct mouse coordinates from Windows Spy. If you're having this problem, the thing to do is run your target application in the leftmost screen when you're actually determining mouse position in the first place. And then afterwards, when you're running the code. So in our case, we'd have Chrome running in the leftmost screen when we're actually using Windows Spy to retrieve mouse position. And this usually resolves the problem. So sometimes you can get away with not using this co-ord mode, co mode, and it will work out correctly where to mouse click, but it's good practice to put it in. Also, it's good practice to put in the occasional comment. So that's a semicolon with a space and just a little description of what we're doing. Click in the drop down. So next, next if we go to the online form, we want to choose one of these. So if you go back to the code, we can sleep for 500, give it a chance to click in that drop down, and then we can send input IT skills. Save it, run it, and it doesn't work. So that is because, if we go back to the script, 
that's because we're using send input and if we use just a simple send that should now work so I'm not exactly sure why that's the case but it's probably connected to the way it's those commands are sending the actual keystrokes in any case we've got it working with the send command so now we want to target this date field so we want to sleep for an interval of another 500 and then send import of tab and then we'll send import 10 10 2020 and see how that works so right click run and it works so now it's just a matter of duplicating that code to get down the form let's um, sleep again and it's a good right it's a good idea to uh, write the code out just to develop that muscle memory and send a name, my name to the name field send the tab key Let's just test it's working. And it's not because I forgot to send the include that tab to go down there. So run that now. Works fine. Now you might have noticed. I've not put a sleep command between sending my first name and sending the second name. That's because tab works quite quickly, so you shouldn't need it. If your computer's running a little bit slower, you might need it. So just be aware that you might need a sleep command. Also, whilst we're on the subject of individual computers, your obviously your mouse click coordinates will be different, so you can get those from WinSpy, Windows Spy, sorry. Now going down to I'm going to copy and paste it. I'm going to cheat a little bit, ignore my own advice of developing muscle memory and put in the employee number, and then once again to get down to the submit button, I'm going to this time click enter save that now let's see if we can actually run the whole script so it runs through the entire form and it's submitted so that's worked that's great so we've successfully filled the form in and submitted it but let's get back to where we started, which was the fresh form, just to finish it off, give us a complete cycle. So let's sleep. In fact, before I write the code, let's look at the uh, what we're trying to do. So we're trying to submit another response. One way of doing it would be to get the coordinates of that, the mouse coordinates. But another way is if you press tab, you notice that the link is in focus and if you press enter it'll take us to the new form so let's try that in the code so if you sleep two thousand milliseconds that'll give the form a chance to submit 
send input tab send enter and then sleep another 2000 milliseconds just to give the just to give the form a chance to load the new form that is so now if we run the code let's save it first the code works the new forms loaded so that's great probably worth doing a lesson summary for this one in that it's kind of a critical lesson. In summary, by filling some fields with data, we've done the essential task of targeting an application and interacting with it. In a way, it's a feasibility study for the entire idea or project you've got in mind. Essentially, if you can get auto hotkey to do it once, you can probably automate the task entirely and repeat any procedure many times. From experience, if you're having difficulty filling a field with data, it's often because your scripts are running too fast. So try putting in sleep commands with various delay times around the send input or send commands.